The C and Wit show? I'm watching that for sure. Oh, 100%. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a female. I do not do work. I'm too rich for that. We don't like violence. Guys, I'm not gonna like brag or anything like that, but like, oh, it's my last shot. Everyone else? Fair Fuck them. <laughs> Welcome back, bitches, to another podcast. <clears throat> I'm Whitney Wren, and this is Disney Channel. And Kristen Whitman. But today we're back, season two, episode two. That's how you know it's a good one. We have a special guest. Bri. Anna, self. Isn't that weird? Bree, is it two 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 or something? Your guest number two, season two, episode two. Wow, two, two, two. this is a lucky day. Congratulations, it's my angel number. <clears throat> okay. Bri, <laughs> stop calling her that. B R Y, Bri, Bree. Thank you. Um, this is Bree. Hey, Bree. How are you today? Hey, guys. How you doing? Um, really Thanks for having me. Really excited. We, me and Whitney have been talking about this all day. We're super excited because she's behind the scenes on literally everything we do. Um, but now we get yeah, to I'm it. really tired. I, I, I don't know how you're not tired of us and speaking is just every single day. <laughs> I mean, I get tired of myself talking. Yeah, like I'm right getting now. tired right now, actually. Mm-hmm. So, actually, um, <laughs> Bree... <laughs> <laughs> Bree, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, where you're from, and everything like that. All right, so my name is Bree, not Bri. Uh, my full name is Brianna Self. Um, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. That's where I was born. My dad was in the military, Army. Um, then we moved to New York, um, where we lived there for like eight years. And then I lived on the military base, and then... Um, my dad was medically discharged, and we moved here. I've been living here for like 15 years now, since middle school. Um, I have five siblings, about to be six, and I'm the oldest. Um, four of them are my real siblings, and another is a half-sibling. Look at you. you got a big family. I love your mm-hmm. mama. I love her, too. She's, She's so cute. my best so friend. Sweet. So, we're kind of going to jump around because we do know, like, certain topics will take a little longer than others, but how did you kind of get into doing social media a little bit, um, and then what pulled you away from posting and almost turned into, like, Whitney's manager and then things like that? Um, so, social media, I always had Musical.ly when that was a thing. Me and my sister had Musical.ly, mm-hmm. um, and I always used to make videos, like, after school, I'd come home and make a Musical.ly, and <laughs> thought it was so cute but um and then I met Whitney um three four years ago now and I started doing TikToks with her I taught her how to dance on you there you took a lot of like, pride in that oh, don't that was you horrible yeah absolutely horrendous <laughs> I would watch my things back and I'm like what in the hell was this I th- let <laughs> No, <laughs> no, we can insert one of our videos in this. Yeah, actually, let's do it. your first it's ever TikTok horrible. is I remember seeing it though because it was in your kitchen. Yes, we used to always yeah. make videos, mm-hmm. and I used to teach her the dance, and she did not we know what she was so doing. So hammered and play flip cup, and then let's make a TikTok, Wendy. Like, but it was when TikTok was like not a thing. Uh-uh. Like it, it was, was like just starting. Start yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh, um, and then from days. there, it just kept it going. So I've had TikTok since it was musically. Yeah, I had a Musical.ly. Me, me too. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you actually, scroll down enough, you can yeah. find mine. Please um, I actually... Let me take a selfie. I actually got grounded um, because one of the sounds were Holy Testicle Tuesday. And at the time, I had no no idea even what testicles meant. <laughs> and I made a video and posted it. My mom found it, and I got grounded. That was my Musical.ly days. Oh. I had a... Uh, the lowest thing I had was... Uh, <laughs> The first thing I, I I wanted in MySpace, yeah, real bad. I, I never, never had get one. that. No. I, was, I had I, Facebook. I wasn't. I, was I don't think I was like that old. I didn't know that young. Yeah, I like was not my. I time. was too young to have MySpace. Mm-hmm. Huh. Facebook was a really big thing around. Yeah. Like when I was. I in begged school. my parents for a Facebook when I turned. Six, like, but I had to make my birthday a year older because I wasn't allowed to make one. Same. So my Facebook it says I'm gonna be twenty. I was born in 1980. Nineteen eighty. <laughs> <1980? laughs> So my mom was Wait, how, born. how old are you, though, Brie, actually? I'm um, 22, about to be 23. November 24th, I'm Thanksgiving baby. It feels like you're um, a lot younger than me. 
I feel a lot older though. Yeah, I think her. I think her actions mm-hmm. make us seem a lot younger than her. Um, well, I remember her walking around in high school, like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, look at the witty Bree Bree. <laughs> yeah. Do you Back have in any? the Lundy days. Mm-hmm. Do you have any questions? We have a lot. Oh yeah, I got a lot. Um, <clears throat> where'd you go to school? Um, like around here. Mm-hmm. I went to Seminole Middle and Seminole High. Hmm. Okay. When did y'all meet? In high school? Yep. I met her my 10th grade year. When I was with when, when she, I was with Jared. I was talking to Jared still. Yeah, because I was talking to Jared before and then she stole him. Actually, no, I was the first. <laughs> we kind of switched. <laughs> <laughs> then, oh, I, yeah. then I had this boy named Tony. Oh, and yeah. And she I, stole him again. Well. Then she went lesbian. <laughs> Actually, no, I had Tony... Wow, I was a lesbian, apparently. So. <laughs> yeah, that was confusing. Me too, I was confused. Um, <laughs> who would you say was your closest friends in high school? Um, in high school, well, I did color guard, so yeah, I was one of those band nerds. Um, I'm pretty sure she like threw it up one time at herself, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I've got, I got hurt a lot doing it. <laughs> Someone imagine? smacked me in the face with a flag one time and I had to go to get stitches in my eye Did you imagine that? why are you laughing <laughs> oh i love it you were in band i was in color guard but i was with the band so i always got called a band nerd because you wore the outfit i remember you wearing that outfit yeah. it, lo- it looked great um, on you but those were like my main friends because i was with them all the time we had practice from nine to nine nine a.m nine p.m every weekend and after school from five to nine so i was with them all the time did you play any sports that is a sport Whitney (laughs) did you at least get to change the colors of the flags (laughs) yeah um I actually did other sports (laughs) did you what'd you play (laughs) that is a sport Monday (laughs) (laughs) I did cheerleading when I was sideline or competitive sideline for for the football for the football she didn't do any sports I was like six so it was like from like six to eleven, I did <clears throat> cheerleading. But I think oh I played soccer when I was little, but not in high school at all. Nothing no, no high, nothing my at whole high school. Well, from middle school, eighth grade to senior year, I was in color guard because my parents made me. Yeah, I recall that. How do you so, how do you feel? I liked it. She liked it. You didn't even want to play the flute or the trumpet or nothing? No. You didn't? She wanted drums. to throw flags as far as possible in the air. Was, I wasn't a flag. What I were was they? a rifle girl. <laughs> you were the gun girl. <laughs> she was the gunny. <laughs> Did you ever, you was it real? You didn't throw the flag. Was it no, loaded? It was a, it's a wooden gun. Oh, that's stupid. And then, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that word, but uh, I also was a saber. There's a sword. It's called a saber. <laughs> Brie, I think we should just change the subject. Yeah, let's change the subject. Right. Um, <clears throat> not did you ever have any anymore. boyfriends in middle or high school? Um, not. I wouldn't say a boyfriend because my dad was so strict. Like, my parents were just super strict. I wasn't allowed to really do much. Um, my dad, since he was in the military, he was um, just always up my butt about everything, wondering where I'm going, what I'm doing, who I'm with. Um, so I really was never like, if I had a boyfriend, it was like at school, like mm-hmm. you'd go to school, hold your hands him, at lunch, hold hands, yeah. even in high school, kiss. like even like when you're older, um, I had in high school, I had maybe like two boyfriends. Um, Tony was actually one of my boyfriends and, and when you stole him, no, well, you see, I didn't like him back. I had the biggest crush friends. on him and I wasn't allowed to have boys over or anything. So My parents left one day, and I told them to come over. And sorry if you're watching this, because this is probably traumatic for you, but my dad showed up at my house, (laughs) and we're sitting on the couch. We weren't even doing anything. We were just sitting on the couch. My siblings were around, and my dad picked him up by his shirt, said, get the f*** out of my house, and threw him. How old were you? I was a junior, 11th grade. I'd be like, I'm so sorry. And then he went to school the next day and told everyone and oh. never talked to me again. Dude, he got, because let me give you, a, I'm sorry, sidetracked about Tony. Um, 
<clears throat> Have I he got it? punched in the face by my girlfriend. Well, she wasn't my girlfriend at the time. I remember that. We had taken a break, and I was with him, and he got punched in the face. And I, I gave him the balls for that one not to hit her back. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is he okay from no. you No, I don't think so. <laughs> Is he okay? Seriously. Oh, my. Tony, if you're watching this, I'm so- <laughs> I'll be next. I'll let you. <laughs> He's a sweetheart, too. <laughs> He's that's so terrible. So is yeah, that it? I that's... felt really bad. Well, yeah, that's that's basically it. Because before that, he was my first like boyfriend. Because the other ones, that's the was first time young. I had someone over. Because my dad. So the other ones were just like the school type or. or so like, when did you like have your school? first yeah. kiss and stuff? Then since your parents really straight? oh like eighth grade oh. in the hallway. So she was like, ha. Screw I it. actually had. So when did you get freaky dicky with somebody? Tony was my first. That well, that I count because the first one was. Yes. Mm-mm. Yeah. yeah so. Not good story. Not good. We're not yeah. going to talk about that. But oh yeah, gosh. so he was tackling my first, and that was another time I snuck him over. He crawled in through my window. <laughs> and he popped that cherry. <laughs> Real? Uh, oh, I love it. He I said, it. "I thought, I thought you weren't a virgin." I said the first one failed. Too small. Miserably. Too small. And then he went to jail. Didn't pop it. So he's still in jail? kid I no, no, no. fucking yeah. met at the bar. Yes. 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 That when we- I almost started. Yes. That's the one. Uh-huh. I I used to talk to him, too. Me you and Brie are the same type. You did? Yeah. We held hands once. That's not And tough. then I never talked to him again. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> It was like, he was like the, you know, like the eighth grade, seventh grade where you just talk over text. Like kick. Like kick and then yes. I got scared I because he was dating. I had a kick too. Really? Uh-huh. For a while. Hmm. I learn new things every day. Mm-hmm. Me too. Um, <clears throat> what do you think that people misunderstand about you most? Um, well, that you're miserable for being starters, <laughs> a lot of people think that I am just like them we're total opposites there nothing wrong with them nothing bad about you guys but we're total opposites people just don't people just don't uh they don't know me from i don't know i just don't put myself out there on social media i don't put my relationship my relationship's very private only my friends know um i'm not blunt yeah that's the word I'm not blunt. You She'll are hide too. it. No, Just. I, I only to you guys, not to Whitney. I'll you guys you. are like she's scared. She's scared to death of Whitney. <laughs> oh yeah, I am. <laughs> so I do it. Yeah, job. but I'm, I'm nice to Brie though. Very nice sometimes. Mm-hmm. Not me. I'm not a mean girl Mm-mm. unless I have to be. No, she's but I'm not. she's mature. Brie stirs it. No, she's every fight that I've gotten to, she starts it. She's no. the one that comes over and she's like, I'm the bodyguard. Oh, no. You come over and you're like, she's talking shit about you. She's spitting in your face. She's doing this. I'm like, really? You're like, yeah, fire. Oh, <laughs> oh if three I'm times. drunk. That's if three I'm times drunk, her. yeah. She's done that to me at the bar. Oh. Uh, the reason I fought the one girl, I, the nose thing, that was her. Hey. <laughs> we know that now you're not a mean girl. Um, <laughs> you would say that you're not like us. Um, <laughs> she definitely is the we have we keep the circle very small mm-hmm. is what we do we don't get along with her get along is not the word for it we don't really like anyone if i'm being honest with you everybody always just tickles our pickle too much yeah no jerks it circle jerks we just kind of is there like she, she laughs she does fun shit with us but she doesn't but if she's not with us she's at home with, <laughs> with her salon yeah mm-hmm well, that's, to herself. That's you guys she didn't too. used to be like this though she used to be like the people pleaser where she would go out and she would hang out with people at the bar and like all these ho- i'm sorry but you would hang out with like shit ass girls Who? and then you realized there's there's like three for specifics um <clears throat> i think i know who you're talking about. yeah and then she wouldn't invite me to any of her parties or nothing like that parties because, yeah you would have like parties like when your birthday have- parties i was invited because you didn't want me fighting them. <laughs> Do we need to go into a Oh, camp? she's talking about my party bus one time. Wasn't that for... It was like twice. It was like a birthday dinner and then because you invited my ex no, and not me. No, because Jared and her were invited. And there was two girls on the bus that she didn't like. 
and I invited her still. And this is when she, this is Thanksgiving. So she goes to Georgia mm-hmm. and she said, how long ago? Was she this? told me two years. Yeah. Two years ago. She had, but we weren't close. We were friends, but we weren't like we are now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But she told me if I come, I'm going to end up fighting one of them. Like, and her ex was there. So it's used always to spit a bit on me and always, shit. Yeah. And try me. Uh, she threw a drink threw, on her one yeah, time. Yeah, drunk drink on me, glass of bottle at my head. You didn't fight her though. Oh, I split her face up. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't want to replay that moment. Yeah. I invited her, but and then, she, so she, 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 was, didn't, she and okay, no, what, what would really happen was she would always tell me that none of the people that were in the group chats wanted me in the group chat. So she wouldn't put me, she would put everybody else in there, but not, not me. So I would see it off my boyfriend's phone at the time. I'm like, oh, my God, see everything that was in there. And like, hmm, that's weird. So my boyfriend was invited at the time. So I told him, I don't want you going. He's like, okay. So I stole and him. And he went to Georgia with her. Yeah, I took him. But no, I that, told her, I said, if you're not going, why would I put you in the group chat? But and she just wanted to be in it, though, just to start be in it. it. Yeah, me yeah. Too. No, it wasn't to start shit. I just wanted to be involved. I was never involved. I was always the one that was out of it. But then ever, now everybody loves me because I don't fuck with anyone. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Back to where we were. <clears throat> let's like say. you guys saw some unfinished business. We do. I can tell. Yeah, but let's talk about how we, me and you got close. Um, <clears throat> Bree's known my ex-boyfriend for a very long time. Uh, just as long as me, actually. And she saw, like, a lot of, like, what we were going through and stuff. And. She wouldn't really, like, tell me, like, no. She was always like, he's ugly. He's ugly. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> you did it too. Um, but <laughs> when me and my ex got, he had cheated on me the last time. I was living with him at the time. I had to move out. Which one is this, Jay or? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I had to move out and get all my stuff. And at the time, my house was getting remodeled. This is last year. Oh, this year is when ago. we... Yeah. Yes. So we all three got close at the same time. Well, it was me and her separately. and then This is when you were living at Justin's house. I was living at my brother's house. And what even happened? We started going to the gym. I think you were, no, we you were hanging out with Sav. And yeah. Sav brought you to the gym. And I was like, I'm going to steal her from Sav. Mm-hmm. I stole her from Sav. I was Sav. with Sav and Kinsey. Mm-hmm. And you were hanging out with Kinsey a lot. Mm-hmm. And Kinsey's my ex-boyfriend's ex-girlfriend. So it was like a like you were trying to be friends with her but she didn't want you to be friends with me yeah and then eventually me and her i think you got a job at me but you mean you were okay like we were close but we weren't close because was, you were so like all over the place it like, was when i was working at longhorn mm-hmm. you had asked me to work, work for, me. for you but before that we were going to the gym a lot so mm-hmm. it was like we were off and on like going to the gym and i just worked a lot yeah when so I worked, it was a server y- yeah and then you are also living i was living at justin's you were all the way in 30 minutes away so yeah yeah, so we ended up hanging out a few times and then we go to the gym every single day Mm -hmm. that was fun and then i was like hey you want to work with me she quits her job i've worked there for one day yep i literally started texas roadhouse and the same day i was at whitney's house i was supposed to go to work she asked me if i wanted to work with her and i just never yeah i just never showed up well i remember when you first started taking pictures for her Mm-hmm. That's when we At started Justin's getting house. close. Well, the first thing I asked her, I was like, "Would you, would you want to, would you want to work for me?" No, like, no, because I, she said she needs a manager, and or like well, someone to uh, assist her. Me and her, would, okay. Me and her would always look through my nudes. Okay, we would joke about my nudes. We, you know, we have like videos and stuff. Like me and her would just, she would look at them. She's so interested in like kinky shit. <laughs> like you would not expect that. Of I remember kinky you telling shit. me about this shit and. Brace I was like, not you? innocent. No. I was like, I'm in bed. You seem really freaky. <laughs> I was like, you seem really freaky. Do you want to like maybe... Uh... No, you said we were talking in the car. <laughs> I remember this day. We were with your mom and we were taking Tatum to the park. And we were talking about someone assisting you, managing you, mm-hmm. whatever. And I said, you just need to find someone that you can really trust. And you and I said, wait a second. What about me? Mm-hmm. And then you were like, yeah, let's do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, okay. She was my first employee. How about them apples? We went, we went and bought an and iPad. Everybody and everybody was so jealous, too. Oh, Winnie went and bought me an iPad after that, and we were at the mall. I was on my iPad in the mall. I was so excited mm-hmm. to work for her. Mm-hmm. She was calling my name. I remember, and then Whitney got me to contact yep. you because I had my own manager. I was but like, dude, fire the hell. Fifteen <laughs> percent. Mm-hmm. Not even that. It was the fact that she was never there to. Well, you guys never lived close, so. 
Yeah. She would never could never do, do photos for me, so no. it was like she's not gonna do anything. But even during that time, her boyfriend at the time, he did not like OnlyFans at all. He used to rip on me like he still all the does. time. He's like, "Why would you? You're messing up my questions." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he was always like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I, went, I can't believe you would do that. And he sees my bank account. He's like, wish I well, could that's do that. why you do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I wish I could make that mm-hmm. much. Here's another question. All right, here we go. <clears throat> We're going to get back. into the deep shit. All right. Bree? Huh? What? I guess we could talk about me meeting Bree. I met, I remember the day I met you. It was... You came. She, I don't remember the day I met her. She says it's someone I was being mean or something. You okay? So the the day I met you, yeah, she did not like you. You came Mm-mm. to Whitney's house because with, I would always cry to her about like not cry, she but like I would. Her. She never answers me. I would literally text Kristen and be I like, "I miss her. you. I want to hang out with you." Like you just and you would sit there and whimper and cry on the f- <clears throat> and on the f- and then people would go in my live saying, "Go help Kristen. Go help Kristen." Well, I'm we like, even, "This like, bitch don't even like fucking that, talk." Though. Okay, but we could have been. But you're right. a bitch, so you. I was depressed because I had. Well, you'd hang out with everybody else but me. I don't know who the fuck everyone else is. Mm-hmm. Okay, the day I met you. So she came over in the house. We, we were in the hot tub, and you came in with Liv, Brandon, Connor. Con- no, no, no. Yes. It was Rocky. No, it no, was no, Connor. No. It was. It was Connor and JMO. Oh yeah, it was Connor and Jared. Yes, we were all in the hot tub, and I was, I was like, sitting memories. in the hot tub, and you walked out the door. As soon as you walked out, you started twerking. I was like, "Who is this girl?" Well, because and then you got upset because apparently you had only came over because you knew that Connor was going to be at my house. I don't remember this day. I don't and I, and no, she got mad because I was Connor got tattooed that was, that was from j oh, yeah. and he gave me one. And I was there and you called Connor. I'm like, why are you the hell you at Whitney's house Who is this girls? girl? Why are you getting a tattoo with her? And I'm like, listen, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. And then you showed up and I was mm-hmm. like, oh my God. And you just kept looking at me, and you were like, "Really?" And I was I like, don't, "I honestly, I do not." And then I, this. and then when you left, I said, "Whitney, why, why is she looking at me like that?" She said, "And I didn't she know." Just, you said she just does that. She tries to read people, and I was like, "Okay." No, I lied. She's just a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it took us a while to get really like, like a like a month that or close two. with each other. Because mm-hmm. I had it, a, I had to figure you out. I had to see if I. If you were just really well, a bitch or then then we go to daytona that yeah. bring your ass that's when we got close yeah that's Ruslan, when i got close with her but, but then we got into it then yes. Ruslan didn't like me so mm-hmm. she wouldn't want to hang out with me mm-hmm. well because then that night when he stayed back because she didn't feel good and we went to that arcade and it was just me and her and we got closer i think that trip mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but me and Ruslan did not get along because he yelled in Whitney's and face. I, I and I told Ruslan, I said, you guys suck it up because this is my best friend. You're going to deal with it. And he said, okay. I'm then sorry. he came back to me. I was like, you're going to get used to it. You got nicer, though. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. I'm uh, Because I have removed, I don't know, every toxic person in my life and now I'm surrounded by good people. I don't know who made you like that, though. Who was around when I started when I started becoming friends with you? I don't know. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so <clears throat> there's a little background that 45 minutes later on mm-hmm. how we know Brie. Now we're going to get into some deep questions. Can I ask, are your parents still together? No. Okay. My parents divorced four years ago when I met Ruslan. I don't even know where to start. Um, Neither. What was your favorite place to live, like, with your family? Like, state? Mm-hmm. Here. Okay. Probably, yeah, because I don't remember living in Ohio. I was too young. Um... I don't really remember much of my childhood, sadly, but uh, New York, I remember a lot, but that was probably the most traumatic part of my life, so I definitely didn't enjoy that, so probably here. Well, did you have a lot of friends or, like, anywhere to get away, or were you just too young? Um, I had a lot of friends, but we lived on a military base, so you had oh. different communities on your base, so mm-hmm. you had, like, different housing, basically, based on your rank, so... The housing that I lived in, I wasn't allowed to leave my community. Like, you could go across the street and go to another one, but my parents were so strict. Mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed. I lived on base, too, in California. We had had to stay in the community. Three friends, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you take care of your siblings when you were growing up? Yes. Um, So, like I said, I have four siblings that lived with me. 
Um, and I and you're all from the same mom and the dad. Same. Yeah, my mom and dad have five together. <clears throat> and then um, I have a half brother. But those um, four siblings lived with me growing up. And my dad was in the military, like I said, so he was deployed a lot. Um, and there was one time where he was deployed for two years straight. Like, and didn't come back? Yeah, he didn't come back. Like, he would have, like, R&R, which is, like, come back for two weeks okay. and visit, but you go back. So he was gone for two years. And at the time, my mom had just had my sister, who was – so my brother and sister are Irish twins. They're 11 months apart. Oh, so, so she was hammering it down right so after. So my sibling was, like, two months old, mm -hmm. and she's about to pop out another one. So I was, like – their dad basically like mm. I changed their diapers I fed them I took care of them I bathed them because my mom also was working so and you said they did get divorced why did they get divorced um so they divorced four years ago because my dad had a lot of issues himself um that my mom just could no longer handle um and he cheated a lot so I don't know if that has something to do with the military or, you know, like, like they say, military men cheat. I don't, that seems pretty true. But um, when he was um, in the military and we lived on base, he cheated a lot. And this is my mom was having kids. With, like we were all young and he was constantly cheating and we would leave and she'd come back. She always came back. So because, you would leave with her and then yeah, come back. We w she would take all of us and we'd go back to Ohio. Did you ever see him cheat or no. know the girls or anything? No. I was also really young. I was like 11, 10. So I never seen any of it, but my mom told me like he did cheat a lot. And then once we moved here, um, the story's a little messed up, but I worked at Glory Days. I was 18. The bartender who was there is now my dad's wife. So my dad, her, and I work there. She was the bartender, he was a server, and I was a host. And I had found out from working there, he wasn't coming home at night. And I would come home from work, and I'm like, he would always say, oh, I got out late. I found out he was sleeping with the bartender while my parents were married. So I told my mom. And you're older now, so it's mm -hmm. hit you. When did that happen? Recently. Three years ago. We were, like, picking up her from, <clears throat> me and Ruslan, I remember picking up her from work a few times. And your dad was like, and your dad was already off. He would just kind of mm -hmm. like linger. Yeah. And then I didn't really get, I never really, I never met your dad. You didn't? Mm -mm. <clears throat> Maybe once. You probably, you might have met him there. But I remember him, you know, lingering and you would always be like, I don't know why he's like not coming home or mm -hmm. y'all were kind of like on the outs so how a little you, bit. How did you find that out? And how was it having that conversation with your mom? Um, so we found out because... Like I said, he wasn't coming home, and I just kind of, like, I would see them leave together, and, like, he would take her car, you know, <clears throat> like, I just seen things, and then... He wouldn't come um, home to sleep at all? Mm -mm, he would stay at her apartment. And your, did your mom ever, like, say anything? Well, sometimes, so, once she knew about them being together, he would not come home. He would stay the night. But most of the time, and she he didn't say anything? But, oh, well, this is when they were going through the divorce. So, oh. he, um... So one time he had brought her clothes over to our house to wash them, her clothes. My mom is a little bit psycho. <laughs> so she took those clothes out of the dryer, took her kitchen scissors and cut every single As she one should. of her As she should. clothing. Was there like a specific thing that was just like your mom was like, I'm getting divorced? Um, I think that just really like set her off. So like she was already sure of it probably a year before that but she always held on because of us mm -hmm. you know when you have he was with, with her for a year the bartender um, he was with her yeah probably about a year year and a half yeah that's fucked up and my mom knew about it but she, it's really hard if you know my mom it's really hard for her to just let go She's she so she has like attachment issues with people so like she it's hard for her to just like let go of things mm -hmm. especially well, when you have kids with people yeah, yeah. it's a lot yeah. different mm -hmm. and sh they were together for 17 years so they had Jeez. they were together How, when since, did he start cheating though the bartender before that oh before that yeah, like yeah. since um since my brother was born because he <laughs> cheated on my mom and had another kid with 
my brother and him are a month apart. Yeah. And they're both 18, so so a long time. Mm. That's sad. You said Seven that years when before. you lived in New York, is that right? Mm-hmm. It was kind of traumatic. Yeah. Do you want so, to talk about that or no? Um, there was, like I said, my dad was cheating a lot, and I don't know much because I was so young, but from what I've heard, that's he was cheating a lot. Um, and I always remember my mom waking me up in the middle of the night. She would wake me up at like 2 or 3 in the morning, and she would whisper really quietly, pack, pack a bag, and we have to leave. And she would whisper it to me, and I, she would go start getting the little kids ready. And we would all pack up the car and leave in the middle of the night while he was sleeping because my dad was on a lot of medication from the military. He couldn't sleep because all he could hear was like, you know, mil- like the war. And mm-hmm. he would have like really bad nightmares and stuff. So he was on sleeping meds. So if he was sleeping, he was out. So she knew that was the time that she could leave. So um, we would get up in the middle of the night, leave, drive all the way to Ohio from New York. And we would end up staying there for like a week or two. My mom would, she would enroll us in school. So I went to school there multiple times. Um, And then about like a week or two later, we would go back because he would sucker her right back in. So Mm. was he ever abusive or anything like that? Um, Yeah. So when we lived in New York, um, I don't think it was as bad. But like I said, I was also really young. I wasn't that young, but I just don't remember much because of so much that happened. But he was um, very abusive. But I think it was more so after the fact, um, after he got out of the military. He was medically discharged. Mm -hmm. Um, They had PTSD, I thought, right? Yeah, he has very bad PTSD. He was, um, so he was in a, he was in a Humvee and they drove over an IED and it blew up. And so he got really messed up from that. And so he, they medically discharged him. And they told him, basically, like, you have to leave. You're not allowed to stay here. Yeah. And so, you don't remember him being abusive before that? Um, not, not really. I would, I would say that he was really sick. Like, you could just, if you look at old pictures, you can tell by his face, like, how sick he was just from being, being in there. Um, but I don't remember him ever, you know, maybe yelling. He was very loud. But after, once we moved here, that's when it, because he was out of the military, he wasn't taking his meds like he was supposed to, so. So he wasn't, like, doing drugs or anything bad like that? Not that I know of. He had a very bad um, addiction to alcohol. Okay. So he was an alcoholic for a really long time. Um, He actually just finally stopped drinking. So um, for about the whole, my whole childhood, he was drinking. And that's what made it so bad. So um, once we moved here, his drinking got worse because he didn't have a job anymore. He wasn't allowed to work because of his PTSD and, you know, everything. He was serving at, like, after a while he started serving. He finally started going back to work. But his drinking just got so bad, got out of hand. Um, He would come home drunk all the time. And just, I just remember, like, a lot of times him and my mom would argue. And... He, one time, we always were told to go to our room. Not like we couldn't hear it because it was so loud, but he took the couch one time and threw the entire couch across the room, and it hit my mom. And um, there was, there's a lot of things that happened, you know, like when I was living there, but there was this one time when, well, there's twice, but one time it got really bad. Um... My mom was sleeping, he came home drunk, and all I, I wake up, I was laying on the couch, I was babysitting this, this night, my little cousins, so I was sleeping on the couch, and I heard someone coming through the front door, and I hear someone start screaming off the top of their lungs, so I jump up, and, well, at first I thought they were having sex, so I was like, okay, I'm not going to go in there, so they were in their room, and I just hear my mom screaming, like, bloody murder, and I, all I think of is he's killing her, like, he's drunk, he's killing her. So I'm trying to find my phone. I'm trying to call the cops. I'm trying to figure out what to do. Mind you, I'm only like 15. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm still pretty young. So then I hear the door open and I see my dad come running out. So I pretend like I'm sleeping. So that I I always 
stayed out of the way so I didn't get hurt. I didn't want him to. I don't think he ever would. But so I just that's, never so that was wanted. another one of my questions. Did you ever say or do anything for him to, to go after you? No. He never hurt us kids. He never. Um, but after he ran out the door, uh, my mom, so the cops ended up showing up. He had taken his car and driven down the street and crashed because he was blacked out. Um, but basically what happened was he came home. He was so drunk he started strangling my mom. And she said that when she was looking in his eyes, there was no one there. Like, basically, he was just so drunk, he was not there at all. And he was strangling her to death. Like, she almost died, and he was beating her face in. And she had said, I, I need to go to the bathroom. And he let her get up, and she jumped out the window and ran down the street to my neighbor. And they called the cops. So my mom came back in the house, her eye was swollen shut. Her whole side of her face was black and blue. And my dad got arrested. So, That's so sad. That was one of... The other time I don't want to talk about just because it happened with me. But there's been a lot of suicidal things that I prefer not to talk about. That's so sad. I'm sorry. Okay. Bree. <laughs> um, did you ever feel like depressed or lonely? Um, I was depressed my whole childhood um just because i knew what my mom was going through and i couldn't help her did you ever try to like tell her like hey what are you doing why you leave yeah we talked about it a lot sorry we talked about it a lot but um my mom just like i said she just never could let go and she was afraid to leave also because like i said she was abusive and she didn't want something to happen to her so eventually during the divorce, they did they finally just leave each other alone? Like your your um, dad went to the girlfriend and your mom just, they just separated completely? Yeah, so um, when they divorced, my dad was with that girl and he finally, well, he kept coming back, like trying to come back to my mom, but like couldn't choose who he wanted, oh. you know. He kept staying there and then he would come, he would move all his stuff out and come back to our house and then move back there. Yep, moving back and forth, so... Um, finally, my mom said, we're selling the house. Like, we're done. I want a divorce. I'm selling this house. So she signed a lease for an apartment and he was basically forced to leave. So, um, he moved in with her and my mom moved into apartment. We sold our house and basically, yeah, so they just divorced and went their separate ways. He tried multiple times to contact her, but my mom was just so far done. Did they ever go to court for like custody of you guys when they split or? Um, I don't think that they did because they're very mutual with each other. Like they're not like my dad's very hard headed, but they get along pretty well when it comes to that. So they do get my dad does get to see us like it. But it's also for us older kids. It's our choice. So we don't have to go there. He lives in North Carolina now, so hmm. we don't have to go there. But the three little kids go mainly for holidays. So Christmas, they'll go uh, like usually like the week before. So mm-hmm. that way they're with my mom for Christmas. Is he doing a lot better? No. Yeah, so he um, <clears throat> told me the other day, um, this is actually really sad. Um, he called me a couple weeks ago crying um, because he finally realized how horrible um we were all treated and you know everything we went through growing up and i think it finally has hit him like what he did um so he called me crying and apologizing which you know it took a little too long for that because it's hard to accept accept something Mm -hmm. you know like you should apologize Mm -hmm. three years ago and your brother still didn't talk to him no my brother won't speak to him So, um, he called me crying and apologizing about it. Um, but he did quit drinking, um, that I know of. I, he lives in North Carolina, so, I mean, he could be lying, but he said he stopped drinking altogether. Um, last time I did go there, though, I won't go there ever again because, like I said, I have, like, very bad PTSD just from what I went through. So, when I went there, all of the doors had holes in them. All of the doorknobs were broken. There was um, holes in the walls. Just like um, as soon as I like walked in the house going up to my room, I seen that. And I was like, 
I didn't go to sleep that night. And you it never was asked wedding. the girlfriend or anything that she. I did ask her. I said, "What? It, like, what is this from?" She said, "It was from my dad, from him being." But drunk. he never hurt her. Not that I know of. No. Mm, um, but she would admit. Yeah, but I have seen things mm. online. Sad. Um, you said that your dad never went after you. Did you ever like? stick up for your mom during those times or did you just feel like you should have just hid or did you scream Um, if any of those things are happening so most of the time I tried not to get involved because he was very like aggressive and I was scared for myself like I'm trying to help my mom but I didn't want to get hurt you know like I didn't um so I tried my best but most of the time I would stay back with the kids because they were so young and I would keep them in my room and, you know, try and mm-hmm. make sure they don't hear what's going on because they're very young and they shouldn't hear that. So I would keep them in my room and, you know, play games with them or something so they wouldn't hear what's going on out there. Um, but there was one time that when I, when I say through the couch um, and it hit my mom, I went out there and I screamed as loud as I could. Mm. And I tried because he was like hitting her and I was trying so, so you hard saw to. It. Yeah, because I, because I heard the couch fly. So I went out and I seen him. But it's it's just like those times he wasn't even intoxicated. That was just from how messed up he is. Like mm. he has brain damage. So he has a lot wrong with him. And he never went to his therapy appointments. He never went and he never took his medication. You know, he wasn't doing what he should have done to help him. So he never got better. And... It only got worse from there, especially with the drinking. It just made it worse. So Mm -hmm. I tried my best to help my mom, but it's hard. Do you ever talk to your siblings about it at all? Um, The younger siblings, no. I don't think that they they, they remember, you know, or they even knew what was going on because this was four years ago. So they were like five and six. Um, They were all very young. So my older brother is 18. And the reason he doesn't talk to my dad is because of everything. Does he talk to you about? Mm-hmm. He tells me that he's very upset with him. He never wants to speak to him ever again. And he doesn't like the way he treats my mom. And he knows how a man should, how a woman should be treated, you know, how mm-hmm. a man should react to things. And he sees that from my dad. So, mm-hmm. um, Do you like the, your dad's new girlfriend, wife? Um, yes, I do like her. It took me a while to like her, though, um, because I really felt for my mom. Um, yes. Like I said, he Shitty. did cheat on my mom with her, yep. which he will deny, but he did, and I didn't like her for a long time because she knew mm-hmm. that my parents were married, and she knew what she was doing, um, but then once they got married, it's kind of like, hey, you, you need to, like... I have to like her. Like, this is who my dad's marrying. They're having Did he kids. ever ask you or invite you to the wedding or anything? I was invited to the wedding. I mm-hmm. went. I was his only person. Did though. he ever say anything like, do you think I should marry her? Nothing? No. How, sh- how old is she? Um, she's like 27, 26. My dad is 42. <laughs> hmm. It's fucked up. <laughs> I was the only person at the wedding. Do you think that your son? mom's sad? Um, or do you think she's happy she's not with him anymore? <clears throat> she's, well, in the beginning, she was very sad. Uh, just think because it, she knew it was finally over. But it was also like lifting a weight off her shoulder. Mm-hmm. That she knew she was done. This wouldn't happen to her anymore. Um, she's definitely very happy now. She's with someone else. Um, he's with someone else. So, I mean, the only time they communicate is for the kids. Yep. But... Um, she's very happy, and I love seeing her happy because it's the first time in my entire life I've ever seen her happy. So. Yeah. Do you have any, like, advice or, like, something you would tell someone, not only in an abusive relationship, but, like, abusive parent or, like, how would, like, to deal with it or, you know what I mean, like, have any past, how to cope with, you know, the childhood trauma from it? Um, well... As of now, I've always been told to go to therapy, but I never have. I'm the type of person where I hold everything in. 
so I don't like to talk to people about things. Um, if you ask me, I'll tell you. But if you don't ask me, I'm never going to mm-hmm. tell you. This is why we were really excited. So, cause yeah, I've never, never I don't tell. Unless you really get me to. You I know, think I was like one of the f- first people. I if just you really get me you. to dig it out, I mm-hmm. will. And it's going to be long, but I'll finally get it out and of my me. my mom. <laughs> but um, I don't know. The only advice that I could give is just never give up on yourself or the person who's struggling because it is an addiction, you know, like whether it's alcohol, drugs, they're struggling. It's a disease. My dad had a lot of um, struggles he was going through. So, I mean, I tried my best to be there for him and help him, but you can only help someone so much. Mm -hmm. They don't want to help themselves. And there's nothing you can do, but yeah. Mm -hmm. How did did, like, kind of ask Winnie the same question going through what she went through. How do you say that affect how you are now and how you've grown up and learned to not do something because of this recent or is something like that? So now I would say, um, well, first off, I'm very aware of my surroundings from that. Um, I'm always watching people. Um, if I'm out in public, I'm at a bar, I'm always watching people. You're very observant. Because, yes, I'm always watching she notices see, where that guy even looks at her the wrong way. She's like, yeah, that doesn't because matter. I'm, it's like yeah. a, I'm not scared. It's just, I, I have like PTSD from everything. So I just watch people around me, you know, if someone's talking disrespectfully to another woman. I will stand up for them mm-hmm. and I will get in their face and I don't let that fly. Um, I would You're say like it, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like that. Mm-hmm. Me and Brie at a bar yeah. together. I would say it made me very mature. Mm. That's why a lot of people say that I'm really mature for my age. She is. Um, Just because of everything I went through. I mean, I was basically their... Raising kids. Their dad. I still get told Happy Father's Day every year (laughs) for, you know, being like their dad. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I would say it just made me very mature, and I grew up very fast. Um, Yeah. How kind of like... Because you've been dating Ruslan for... A while now Warriors. how hard was it <clears throat> to was it harder for you to like trust a man even though you know you weren't ever you know physically beaten by somebody but seeing your mom go through that was it hard for you to look at a man and be like okay you can come into my life and um I would say the hardest thing was not it was more so trusting them with the cheating aspect mm-hmm. like that's all I seen growing up mm-hmm. were men cheating especially in the military that's all they do now I'm just saying every man in the military but most of them that my dad was friends with cheated a lot um so that was something that I had to really like work on for myself and my relationship um I still am very like it's kind of like an insecurity of mine like I make jokes all the time, like, do you have another girlfriend? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you probably hear me say that a lot. It's just an insecurity of mine, um, just because I've seen that my entire life. But I know that a woman should never be treated like that. So mm-hmm. I know, I can tell when, like, I'm not worried about Ruslan mm-hmm. at all, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. So. He's a good dude. Mm-hmm. How did you and Ruslan meet? So. We met through Trayvon. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to throw that in the face. Yeah. He loves to tell people that. Mm-hmm. Um, we had met, uh, me and Trayvon were going to the study one night, which is a club here in Tampa. It's not here anymore, but um, we were going to the club, and it was me, Trayvon, and Anna. We were at Anna's house getting ready, and Ruslan had FaceTime Trayvon. And Trayvon turns the phone, like, he's like, who are you with? Trayvon shows me. That was like the month he was single. Yeah. I mean, this they man gets just... into relationships. I've been friends with him. He had, like, three relationships. All cheated on him. I was like, damn, we got to get you a lawyer. Ask her. <laughs> Little girl. There she is. Walking yeah, right in. I wasn't looking for a relationship at all. I wasn't. I was literally. This was the time I had just graduated high school. My parents are divorcing. You know, yeah. I'm like, I'm You're free. You're right in the middle of it. I'm so free. Like, I can do whatever I want. I was never allowed to go out. Party. I had a curfew at 11. If I went to a high school party, I never drank. I always drove and I had to be home at 11. Mm. So I never had fun. So this is my first time like actually going out and partying. And I used to hang out with Alex Johnson all the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were all going out together and he showed Ruslan me and he said, who is that? 
And I was like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and then I asked, I invited him that night, but he had other plans, I guess. So he didn't come. The next day we went on, I went over there that night. We went in the hot tub and just hanging out and um, got it on a little too soon. But <laughs> as soon as I walked Same in the girl. door, he started eating my face. So then that happened. <laughs> the next day we went on the boat and I met Whitney a lot of us went on the boat, and there was a lot of shit that went down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my abusive other boyfriend decided to abuse us both. Mm. Screamed. Because me and her, like, kissed. Yeah, yeah, I remember we you talking flirting, about this. Yeah. like, joking around, yeah. like, drinking, I remember, taking yeah. shots. Well, I had never He's met trying her to before. cuss us she out, was... rip us off the boat. Oh, yeah. my God. And then, <laughs> after that, we oh, were dating. Sorry. I mean, we were together, like, talking for three months four months and i kept asking trayvon like is he ever gonna ask me out hmm. yeah like i'm confused then he finally surprised me one day september 22nd hmm. um and took me to the starlight cruise ship that you guys just went on um and asked me out and then we Aww. go back every year on our anniversary and you and ruslan have been together how long four years oh. almost september will be four years and you guys now have a house mm-hmm. you like it i love it it's nice finally. And a puppy. Because we've lived with his parents. Well, we lived with Ruslan's parents for the first, like, year, mm-hmm. maybe a little less. And then his parents were like, we're not okay with this. They're very, um, I don't know. They're, they're like those um, people that know sex until marriage. That's mm-hmm. how my parents were. Like, Doug did not want me to have any boys in the house. Yeah. So I was, he was like, you need to get out. So... Um, they were fine at first with me staying there, but then I think it was just really bothering them. So they basically told us, hey, like... You were the first girlfriend that he was allowed us to have sleep over. Yeah, I was only... I was the first person allowed to sleep in his bed. So, uh, we moved back to my parents' house, but at the time, they were selling it. So, I only thing I had left in my room was a bed. Everything was in the storage unit. And we were remodeling our entire house. So, we stayed there for those last two months before my household, and then we begged his parents can we please come back because he's very against getting an apartment like um mm-hmm. he money. will not mm-hmm. he's so good with his money his dad um is an investment attorney so he teaches him how to save his money very well so he will not get an apartment because he says it's the biggest waste of money which i agree yeah. but we did never... your did your dad and russell ever have an encounter or me yeah they've met multiple times has anything ever happened between like in the beginning of that because he, you said that he was strict when you first got a boyfriend. Um, so when I first started dating Ruslan or talking to him, um, I was still living at home. Um, and I had texted my mom a really long paragraph telling her that I am 18 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do my own thing. I think I remember this. And basically saying I'm going to do my own thing. If you don't like it, I don't care. I won't yep. be living there anymore. Yeah. It- you know, I'm not a kid. You can't keep holding me Was back. it more of your dad saying things rather than your mom, or was your mom kind of on no, the same page? No, my mom did not care at all. It was my dad. Mm. Um, but I had sent it to my mom because mm. I was too scared to send it to my dad. <laughs> so it was to both of them, but to my mom. So um, once I sent that text, um, I didn't go home for about... Well, I told them that I was staying at Taylor Pyre's house, uh-huh. which she lived next door to Ruslan. Uh-huh. So worked out good, but then... After staying there for about three nights, my mom was like, yeah, you need to come home. And I sent the text because I didn't, he wanted me to stay. He wanted Mm -hmm. me to stay there like forever. So I sent the text and then I started staying at his house more often. And I would go home every now and then, but he would come back with me. I remember you would come and trade cars or Mm -hmm. get your car or or go to work. We would switch. We'd go stay at my house for a little and then his house and he would stay with me. And he finally met my dad and my dad really liked him. Um, but my parents knew they couldn't do anything about it, so yeah. they accepted it. This is the last question I have on my thing. Um, what's your favorite part about working with me and Kristen? <laughs> <clears throat> my favorite part of working with you guys, I would say... And being friends with us, because you were our friends first. Yeah, so working with you guys, I would say the best part is just being around you guys all the time. Because it's fun, and we we get to hang out more. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, you have to hang out with me. Like, no, I wake up in the morning, I'm like, what are you doing? Get Where are you at? To my house. Who are you with? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I would say getting to hang out with you guys and being closer. Um, I'm getting to work from home. I don't have to go to a real job. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> nine to five? Mm-hmm. No. Not happening. <laughs> I do kind of miss serving, but 
I, I do guess. too. Sometimes I get like I get like I'm like well, I'm oh, I wish I was a bartender. A yeah, can I go serve for one day? It makes me like busy and like mm-hmm. think about it. But. I just liked making the money where you don't know how much you're gonna make. Yes. Yeah. It's like you work your butt off and you know you're gonna walk out with five hundred dollars. Yep. So I miss that a little mm-hmm. bit, but and being friends with you guys, I would say kind of the same thing. Like we hang out all the time, get closer since we work together. Yeah. So we're not fun. Or funny. You're, funny. You're very mm-hmm. funny. Funny. I think you guys have made me funny. Uh huh. I brought it out of you. You said you say some slick shit. And She's I'm like, like yeah, very sarcastic. I'm now very, with me. I'm yeah. very sarcastic, but not to Kristen because she'll snap back at me real quick. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. You're sarcastic with me. Mm-hmm. Now I am. Yeah. I she... didn't use. To, I had to get used to you because in the beginning, <laughs> I was like, Who Scare. does this bitch think she's talking uh-huh. to? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's just how she talks. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. had to get used to it. I kept telling all my friends, I'm like, don't don't, don't judge her. Me. I swear she's nice. You just got to get it out of her. Yeah. I, was, I don't think I was like ever mean oh, you intentionally mean all the time. to y'all. Everybody. No, to me. You were nice to Whitney. You're mean too. So I don't know why she's sitting here. Y'all are dogging Yeah, but me. I'm nice to people at first. And then I started to get mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Whitney was really nice to me. Then now she's just like. Sometimes she's a little mean, but mainly like, to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mainly to me mean. because I say it back to her. <laughs> oh. You, you're just like, Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. no, but I think working with Brie and like being friends with her, she keeps me and Whitney like in place. Mm-hmm. Well, she, me and Brie get you in place. She keeps me and Whitney in place, and <laughs> no, I'm the boss. <laughs> There I mean, go. she's she has, got she's got she my has mind, her, She has her shit together. She's she's awesome. We love Brie. And I think I was just sitting here and I was like, just like, honestly, fucking stupid of me. But like tearing up, just like thinking about, I like blanked out when you were like talking. I was just thinking about like you two, like how y'all grew up. And it's so crazy how like my life is completely different mm-hmm. from y'all. And I had probably never expect that from me. No. And, and Whitney, mm-hmm. and when I found out like a lot of stuff, like I don't, I don't. It's just crazy to me because I grew up in a home with two parents. No, mm-hmm. that I know of any physical abuse or no. No, I moved around. When I was in the mil- my dad was in the military, and it didn't seem like a toxic environment for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm proud of y'all for how y'all are as and as you are. And no, I'm, I'm being genuinely serious. It's <laughs> it's crazy to see like how much y'all laugh and smile and go through life knowing that that's literally like in the back of your mind at mm-hmm. all times so mm-hmm. i'm proud of you guys for that okay so um most of you guys know we're all besties right besties for the resties no more sappy shit anymore. yeah can't do we're it. gonna pass on that one um we're gonna play the game again like we did the first season of the first episode um who's most likely to so you're gonna go first okay <clears throat> who's <clears throat> most li- who's most likely made for reality tv whitney you think I think, well, I guess both of us. Why would you say, would say that? Both. Because we're obnoxious. Well, she has a sailor's mouth. So yeah. She's, you'd have to watch your mouth a lot. Um, I don't say anything I'm not supposed to. Uh, well, I would, I would never like say anything that's like. Inappropriate. Yeah, like, you, you know, get me like canceled. But do I definitely stir the pot and know how to work drama mm-hmm. and work the camera? That's what, yeah, that's why you And the audience? Mm-hmm. If it were like a drama show mm-hmm. like a reality show which is exactly yeah, what but this is. if yeah. it's a dating show in your time i'd no. kill that sh- mm-hmm. no <laughs> the fuck <laughs> she would date all of them first <laughs> <laughs> no she would get on the show and they'd be like oh, i've dated you <laughs> well there's your friend well, i dated you too <laughs> she'd get on the show she'd be like i already talked to all these people on the house this is a good one who is it who is most likely to this doesn't make sense but is a terrible influence Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to have mm-hmm. to go with Whitney. Mm-hmm. Horrible influence. <sighs> Who's most likely to can't drive for shit? You. <laughs> Whitney. I'm a good driver. You're I'm bad. a great driver. No, you're not. Oh. It's oh, two against oh, one. Oh, oh, she can't okay. admit it to you want, herself. You play? You play yeah, a game? Yeah, mm-hmm. like a, yeah who's the one person that hasn't gotten the crash in this room? Yeah. Thank I've you. never been. I've never been. I've never been. Because you don't drive. You pull over the side of the road and you're well, like, I've been, actually, I've been. Been. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, will you please come drive me, please? 
That's not Passenger true. princess. I am a passenger Hey, I can drive. When you're not on your phone. I still can drive. I still haven't <laughs> got a car accident or nothing. Me either. All right. That's because you drive an 18 wide that yeah, I still people hit it. watch out uh-huh. because they're going to get ran over. <laughs> hey, I still have haven't jumped it. They're they're gonna get car accidents over. happen because of her car. Yeah. Other cars hit each other. Yeah. Except for her. All right. Who's a... Who's most likely to be obsessed with her butt? She picked that just so we could say her. I'm not obsessed with my butt. She's obsessed with my butt. You're, You're obsessed, obsessed with, with my your butt. butt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not obsessed, I'm with, obsessed with, my with her butt, butt too. <laughs> <laughs> your turn. Who's most likely to make a great cougar? I'm going with Kristen. Um, all of hers have been older than her. Then yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to raise my hand on that mm-hmm. one. <clears throat> uh, who is most likely to get countless bruises and has no idea why? <laughs> Kristen, yeah. <laughs> that one here is just... She I'd say both. She's like, well, both. I mean, we do bench press with a bitch. <laughs> With men that we have no idea what's going on to get flipped and get concussed. I mean, Winnie's pretty dingy too. Yeah, I'd be jumping and shit. She said, "I'm dead, but I'm alive." Yeah, <laughs> I'm alive, but I'm alive. Who's most likely to fucking love Christmas? Me. <laughs> Me. I love Christmas. I just know at your house this year. Is just oh, just be, wait. This is the first time all she's, she's I'm gonna have five Christmas trees. Have you even decorated <laughs> for any holiday yet? No. It, yeah. This is my the first only one house, worth so. it is like. Christmas and don't put a damper on her parade. No, I was getting her excited because I'm ready to see her Christmas lights. Me too. Because Ruslan's gonna go we're all gonna, out. We're gonna, gonna turn be like the left under her store. neighborhood, and it's just gonna be <laughs> just, just gonna be breeze house. outside and inside. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Who is most likely to can't remember shit? <laughs> I can't remember a damn thing. I tell life. Winnie something, and she asked me to like. If you yeah. if you look at our text, she asked me a question. I answer. I'm not kidding. She asked me the question again. Bri, I'm not kidding. Yesterday when I got, but those, she does it too. When like, I got, Whitney, I just answered that. When I got those damn gift cards, she called me as soon as I left. Actually, I called her as soon as I left the store to tell her I got the gift cards. Oh yeah, I remember oh, this. Go ahead. No joke. Th- <laughs> three minutes later, she called me. Hey, did you get the gift cards? <laughs> <laughs> I just she'll tell me too every time she cleans my house she's like just to make sure i just want to let you know i put those files in this drawer i'm like okay she calls me where's the files <laughs> <laughs> yes all right last but not least last question who's most likely to really shouldn't have kids yeah i know that's gonna happen hey. you just like look at winnie and i was like like she'd be good with kids once that like you know it hits her but, like hey, i cannot see her bizarre. pregnant Mm-mm. can't see her pregnant She's good with dogs. I would be such a brat. She'd be like, shut the hell up. Why is this thing crying? Like, yeah. Why is it fucking kicking me? She just saw me in the She'd airplane. She'd be calling me every second. What do I do? There was yeah. four kids behind me in the airplane. They were the whole, the last two hours, bloody murder. <laughs> no, do the, do the, do the baby oh cry. Do the baby oh cry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on, dude? Are we in a daycare or are we on an airplane? I mean, seriously. I'm in mean, seriously. I was going to drive the airplane into the ground. <laughs> Anywho, anything else you want to tell the world? Who's your favorite out of me and Whitney? Come on. Yeah, we both. I don't have a favorite. Me, <laughs> <laughs> You're the same person. Mm-hmm. We can't we pick are. a favorite. But if you had to, <laughs> I have to go with Whitney because I've known her longer. Yes. And I'm going to get yelled at if I don't say her name. <laughs> <laughs> She's scared because you're going to be mean to her. Take I'm this not L. mean to breathe. I'm not Take mean to breathe. This L. I'm not mean to breathe. Sometimes. When's the last time I was mean to you? Mm, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, Brain. You know we love you. We appreciate everything you do for us. Thanks for mm-hmm. having thank me. Thank you for coming on this podcast. Hey, you made me cry. That was a good one. I don't cry. You already cried the other podcast. Shush. I was making her feel. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We're stalling. <laughs> yeah, we're um, like, I don't know how to end this bitch. <laughs> um, anyways, so all right, Brie, we love you. We thank you for everything you do for us. Um Are you praying? <laughs> 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 um, thank you for coming on the podcast. Now get back to your seat where you belong. Behind the screen. See you guys. I love you. Love you. Much love. Thank you and for we watching. Love y'all. Mm-hmm.